October 24, 2023. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on a 2000 tick chart using the NinjaTrader 8 platform. There was one piece of economic data that came out today around 6.45 Pacific Standard, about right here. It was the Flash Manufacturing PMI and the Flash Services PMI. Uh, it didn't seem like it really moved the market all that much. This is a, what the chart looks like today. It looked like there was a rally, a sell-off, two legs down, and then another rally that pretty much had two legs back up. You could say that pretty much all the prices stayed within this gigantic range, but this gigantic range is not really anything to take a trade off of. So I was mainly looking at channels today. I took a total of four trades, two winners and two losers. I've got my first win right here. It's green trade. And then in here, there's one red, one green, and then a final red here. So I was like two for two, decided after that point, I wasn't in tune with the market and I should just sit back. I also felt today was kind of tricky. It was a little tough in that there was some, uh, some setups that kind of faked me out. And I would argue that two of my trades, the two that I got red on, were probably fake outs. And then one of the trades that I did get green on, I think I should have skipped. I'm going to get into the trades right now. This is the pre-market high right here and the pre-market lows, and I drew them out. So when I first see this, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, it might be in a range, although it's a very bullish bias, but it did test two times and it got rejected. So I was wondering if prices were going to come back down here. On the open, this is the first setup I actually see. I saw a new low here. Let me zoom in. New low here. First entry short pulls up, it creates a second entry short right here. Also, it's a new high, creates a first entry long, just one tick above, creates a second entry long. So it's first entry short, second entry short, and here creates a failure. So it's a second entry long confirmed and a failed second entry short confirmed. I didn't really think or was too keen on taking this trade, even though the EMA is kind of holding, but it had a breakthrough underneath just now. And the area just feels a little congested. Now, I did have this yellow channel drawn at the time, and there's one, two, three confirmations. And one, well, depending on how you drew it, one, two, three, maybe two to three confirmations at the top, because you could have just dragged this down a little bit and had a slight overshoot. But I just didn't like the looks of this trade. It's also pressing really close to this gray line, which is the pre market highs. So I decided to leave it alone. Plus, it only happened right at the second minute of regular trading hours. So it's pretty early in the day. I skipped that trade, let it go up. Comes up, touches the top of this. Uh, well, I didn't have this red channel drawn yet, but I did have this yellow one. So actually, it didn't touch anything that I could see at that point. Prices then continue chopping, starts moving back down. It looks like it's kind of in this green channel because I try to make something fit. It looked like kind of fit here with the overshoot here and one two touches down here but not good enough to declare it's a clean fully good channel but it does chop around and it stays what it stays in what i think is a range right here and this is actually where i take my first trade i saw a new low here saw first entry short pull back second entry short so here i'm not thinking of going long or short yet but i did see it because this is a pretty terrible signal to bar to go short here when it flashed up I'm thinking there could be a long here. Now, I will admit this entry is a little early because this is an inside bar and this is already near the top of the range. But the way I was reading it at the time was it was a break of this downward channel. It made one push up. Actually, I counted as one big push up, even though there's one push up, pull back here. So I was one push up, pull back, and there's potentially getting ready for a second push up. And I was able to quickly get a scalp out. And my goal was just to get out before it hit this double top, because this double top is also in line with the bodies here. Now, I will admit that this trade is a little riskier. And I actually got a really good fill because this, I dropped my trade a little bit higher here, but it flashed down and picked me up nicely. And then I got filled here. And I was trading with a runner, and I didn't have enough time to pull my runner up before flash down and took out my runner. Still a green trade, price is then continue moving up. Breaks out of this trading range. I'm thinking there's some kind of resistance up here. So I drew a line up here and then I drew a line down here. It turns out to be this big range here, but I wasn't sure it was really in a range at this point. 
right? So then continue moving, comes down on this green channel. You do have a new high here, first entry long, comes all the way down. You have a second entry long right here. But this is a terrible signal bar. Doesn't really have any good indication to take a long, except maybe if you had a support line here, you could argue maybe there's some kind of bounce off of here, but I just didn't like the signal bar. It had to be green at least. Get ready for the trade. I did see a new low here, first entry short, second entry short, and you have a second entry short failure. But it's after the close of the trigger bar that you have a confirmed failure. And if your entry was placed right here, it feels very high because it's a very big candle. But I think if I were to try to take this trade, I would have placed it probably in the middle, right where the EMA is to help reduce the risk. But in the, any case, I didn't think it was a really uh, good trade to have taken. And then we watch come back and finally breaks above. Then you do think, okay, maybe I could take this trade, but it feels like taking a trade after this bar, this red bar and this green bar felt like it was already too late and you just let the trade go. And prices move up and it hits the top. It tests what I think is this larger range right now. So there's a resistance here that's obeying. Technically, we have a new high here. It's a first entry long, pull back, second entry long. But this, I just don't like how there's too much stem on these candles. Price is then you moving up. So here, I do draw this red channel now because I do like this touching once, twice, three times. I actually had a preliminary channel that kind of shot up a little bit more sharply. And then I made it fit the top one, twice, you could argue it three times. But I thought there was a red channel that I'm playing off of. And every time it got back down to here, I'd be looking for a setup to go long. Prices then continue moving up. This is where I actually take my second trade. Saw a new high, saw first entry long, pull back. Here, it bounced off the EMA and closed very nice and bull. So I thought, okay, there's enough room for this thing to move back up to test this high. Now, granted, this panel has already been broken and it already made two pushes up to new high. So this could be a higher low, but I like the e way the EMA was holding. And I also like that the outside of this trading range was acting as somewhat of a support now. So I decided to take an entry on the next candle, one tick above. I think I got a little bit of slippage because it's 50, 75. Yeah, I actually got a lot more slippage than I like. I don't remember it being this high, but maybe this candle on the previous close is a little bit higher. Anyways, this is a bad entry at this point because it was... Uh, too far from an optimal entry. Flashes down and of course it stops me out one tick below this guy. Then I did see what I thought I saw is one push down, one push up, second push down. So I'm thinking a second entry long visual. Now, I'll admit when I saw this, I was coming off an emotional loss of right here because I was pretty sure this trade was a decent trade. My entry, is the one weakness, it wasn't one tick above. It got two points of slippage, two ticks of slippage. So already I was already behind the curve. But even if I did get it, let's say at 42.77.50, getting out of 42.78.75, that's uh, just barely enough. It's hard to say I would have even gotten the fill on this exit. My entry was perfect. So I just see this one push down. So first leg up, second leg up, visual. I got emotional and that's not the best way to trade. I actually entered one tick above, actually at the highs right here, and I was able to quickly get a scalp out. Now, when I look back on this, I don't think it was a clean, a visual second entry long as I thought, even though it was two legs down. So this was probably a better trade to have skipped over, plus it broke down below the EMA, and then basing my entry just off of this as a signal bar is very, very iffy. If it had at least closed above the EMA and more bullish with the body up here, then I can make a stronger argument. So this is more of a knee-jerk reaction based off of this loss. And this one was lost at 7.33. And you can see in about three minutes, I re-entered the trade. So prices then continue moving, staying outside of this range now. I'm just watching, sitting my hands. Prices then get pretty much congested. It's just struggling here to find a direction. It goes below the EMA, and I'm just watching carefully. It comes back and tests this red channel, which I'm... I'm liking when I see that because then I can trust this red lower support is valid. You have a new low, first entry short, second entry short, it's a bad signal bar, topping. And actually I drew this green channel coming down. I first drew it as a resistance up here. And I actually had the support slightly higher up here at one time. I treated this as an overshoot. 
but it came back and impressed several times without breaking through. At that point, I kind of drew it down to here. And this is where I actually see a failed second entry long. It's a new high. It's a first entry long, second entry long failure. The thing I don't like about the second entry long failure is even though there's a rejection at the top of this green down channel, as well as rejection by the EMA, and you could say it's rejected off the outside of this red channel. So you got a bunch of key entry points helping you, saying, you know, we're acting as resistance. What I don't like is there's not really two clean legs down. There's a new high, by one leg down, push up, second leg down, push up, third leg down. Or you can, if you kind of talk yourself into it, I guess you could say there's one leg, push up, two legs. But these two legs seem just as valid as this one. So to group them together, just to convince myself this is a second entry long failure, felt a little bit hard. On top of that, this area just feels congested. And when this form, there's clearly a support right here. So there's not really any room to scalp out before you hit the support, which could cause a bounce, meaning prices could be moving right back into this red channel. So there's a few things going for it and going against it, made it confusing. And if I really believe that this was a range, this blue line, then you could actually say as another key entry point, there's a rejection off of it. But as I said, too many conflicting ideas. I had to skip it. Prices then continue moving down. I do see a second entry short here, new low, first entry short, second entry short. This is a pretty decent signal bar for a second entry short. I thought it was a possible trade because it also rejected off the EMA and there's enough room down to the bottom, but I didn't take the trade. Prices then continue chopping. It looks like there's some kind of support here. Then it breaks through, pops around, it finally breaks out and above. Then it stays within this orange channel. I'm just watching carefully. This is where I take my last and final trade. So just for the tally. Didn't mean to do that. Just for the tally. It's green, red, green. So I'm up two green, down one red. And this is where I take my last and final trade. Turns out to be red. So I saw a new low, first entry short, pulls back, second entry short. I like this close is above the EMA, and I'm thinking if the next candle ticks above here, it's going to be a failed second entry short. It doesn't, so I'm still waiting. There's an inside candle now, and I thought, okay, it just has a tick above this guy, and I actually have a failed second entry short. It ticks above. I enter one tick above. I'm getting ready to see this thing move back up to give me my one point scalp. Pops around, and then it flashes down. So then it left me wondering, like, what did I see here? Okay, so I saw the EMA was holding, prices were above it. But EMA is pretty flat I'm clearly within a trading range. I came from an overshoot down here and made a matching overshoot out here. There's a failed breakout and it's coming back in. To argue and push for another push up, I did have this yellow channel going up, but it isn't very, it isn't very uh, convincing yet because you still have an overshoot on this side. So it could create another overshoot on this side. And even though it did with these stems, it never closed outside. So in hindsight, it definitely should have just skipped, skipped this trade. It's a little bit risky. It's also near the top of this range. So you'd be thinking, I need to go short because it could be a higher low or a lower high. Turns out that exactly what it was, uh, it stops me out and continues moving down. I do draw this orange channel coming down and prices are just kind of wobbly right now. It does kind of hit the bottom of the support, pops around. This is just congestion. Finally gets back to the EMA and I was looking for a trade. And I did see a new high here, first entry long, second entry long, but this is a terrible signal bar. Nothing here really tells you to go long because you're also counter trend trading. Right now, prices are just moving down clearly now. He's moving, chops around. I did see also see potentially a new high here. It's first entry long, second entry long, and then a failure, but it didn't quite fail till it was already near the lows. And so this is just telling me, just sit on your hands. Also after this second loss, Decided that I wasn't going to take any more trades. Prices then continue moving. I drew this support trend line because I thought it was one touch, two touch. And at the time, I wasn't sure where the top was. So I actually had it a little bit lower here. And I had this treated this as an overshoot. And I didn't draw this overlapping green channel going up. Overshoot here. And I just marked this for myself. I saw this a new high. First entry long, pull back. Second entry long. All in it. So it's like actually the first entry long is when this red candle broke above this guy. Then on the life of this green candle, it not only went down, it broke right back up. So this is where your second entry long hidden is. So it's first entry long pullback, second entry long. But 
it didn't really seem like there was a setup. So I left it alone. Press it then continue chopping. Comes back down and touch the bottom. So it's a third confirmation. I do like it. I saw this as a new high here. Clearly a new high higher than these two guys, just barely. First entry long, pull back, second entry long, and then pull back, and it's created a higher low. I thought this was a possible trade because it's confirmed the second entry long. It's coming off of the bounce of this bottom of this yellow channel. And I was thinking there's a trading range here. So there's a fail breakout and it's bouncing right off of it. The risk here is that there's not that much room before you hit the top of the range. So I, uh, if I was still trading, I I'm not sure if I would have taken that trade. And I also saw a failed second entry short here. It's a new low, first entry short, second entry short. Here, it didn't fail yet. But it's causing the EMA. The EMA is kind of holding, and I'm watching prices kind of get squeezed against the bottom of this yellow channel at the top of this potential range. Here, the failure occurs, but by the time the failure occurs, it just feels like okay, the trade has moved on. You know, there's nothing really here to try to take because it's already near the tops as well. Prices didn't continue. I do see a second entry long here. It's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. Again, it's respecting the bottom of this yellow channel, which is great. This is technically the signal bar though, because this is a terrible signal bar and it broke just one above and it came back and it bounced up again. If I were trading this in real time, I'm pretty sure I would not have thought to take a long when I saw this. Then when I saw it break one above and close down here, I'm not sure I would have been ready to take a long either, even though I like that it's bouncing off the trend line. Then this is kind of an inside bar and finally it breaks up and goes through. When it breaks up and goes through, I think you'd have to have been pretty aggressive to enter one tick above, but you're kind of hitting and pressing against the localized highs, and you'd be basing it all off the strength of this yellow channel, which, you know, could be the top could be here, or it could actually be up here. The trade ended up working pretty nicely, <clears throat> and yeah, when this uh, came up to here, that's when I dragged the top of the yellow channel up to here. So it looks like I'm in a bigger channel now comes down. I do have a new high, first entry long, second entry long. This is a terrible signal bar. Price is then continue chopping. Here it completes the measured leg. So I saw this as one leg up, consolidation, second leg up. So here it's touching now. So I'm thinking if the uptrend is played out, it might reject off of here, but you need a good setup. And I don't quite see a good setup. It breaks up above, continues chopping. This is just congestion now. Price is then move. It falls into this trading range and Again, this is just really congested. I'm not taking any trades off of that. I do see a new high here. Actually, four touches, four highs here. So just one high here. First entry long, pull back. I'm watching here. I think there's a second entry long here. However, whatever happens, I'm not going to take the trade because it's too late in the day. Turns out it would have worked for a quick scalp, but you would have just barely survived. And if you didn't go out with just one measly point, you probably would have gotten stopped out when it came back down on this either this red candle or this red candle, then it just kind of moves into the close. So it was a little bit trickier today. I only got two, two winners and two losers, but I'm actually in the red because my losers were kind of bigger than my winners and plus commissions. So it's a little bit unfortunate. And I did have to just pretty much call it on trading after the second loss because I I try to keep a rule of if I get two losses, then I should probably, probably stop trading. And it kind of depends on how the losses came about. So pretty much how I saw the trades today. Hopefully that was helpful.